Yeah, what up, what up, what up? This is Ted Toes Down TV, and you rocking with Mikey T, the movie stars, number one in the land, in the country. Tune in, Mikey T. Not because I said it, because you have to. This is where all the information is at. This is where the best is popping at. This is where it's happening at. Mikey T, the best in the nation, bro. Ten Toes Down said it. You had mentioned serving time, you know. Could you tell me how much time you actually served in total? I did 21 years. So I got sentenced to 15 years, and I ended up serving 21. I did the 15, and, you know, after 15 years, I have 15 to life. So after 15 years, I go to a parole board, and they decide whether or not to give me two more years, 16, 18 months, or one year, or six months. They gave me two years. And then after 15, I wound up getting a pill in, within a year. I went back again. They gave me two years again. Then I went back in 16, I mean, 17 years. And then they gave me two years. They kept giving me two years. And it was all because of uh, the nature of the crime. And the wording, like I tell the kids, I tell them, listen, when you go to court or when you go to prison and parole board or when it comes to the court system, it's a different language. You know what I'm saying? So it's not like the English language. And it's, you're not going to fully understand it. So we dealing with uh, so-called Ebonics, the way that we speak. Uh, the language, they're they not going to be talking, you think, and what some people call it, uh, you're talking like you're white. But when you get to the court system, they're going to be talking CPL. They're going to be talking case law. So now when I went to the parole board, they said, due to the serious nature of your crime, your release right now was incompatible with uh, society and it would deprecate the seriousness of the crime. And then all this other words. And then I was like, what is all of these words? And then I started to say, you know what? Let me go back and see what happened. So I went back into my paperwork from when I got sentenced and the judge said, do you have anything you want to say? And I started talking, but I couldn't understand what I was reading. After being locked up all these years, I'm like, that's that can't be me talking like this. That's not me. And it went like, well, your honor, I was, I was, and then of course we had no when I because the, the gun, see what happened was I had came and I got in the in the no, see, I, I went, I went down the block. You see, that I'm not even saying nothing, and that's how I was on the paper. I'm like, what the fuck is this? I couldn't have sound like that. And then I went to my parole papers. And I was doing the same thing. And I was saying to myself, you's a dumbass nigga. You dumb as shit. Look at you. You in jail. You can't even talk. You all in the street, in the, in the, in the yard, talking all of this shit. But when you get in front of these people, you can't even talk. You twisting on your words. You don't even know how to talk. So I began to teach myself. It wasn't about school. I already had graduated school. Went to my GD, college and all that. That shit wasn't about none of that. This shit was about me. I sat in my cell. And every word that they used to say to me in that parole board, I studied that word. And then you know how I went back to grammar school. I went back to kindergarten, use it in a sentence. And I started using it in a sentence. And then why they would use that word? Are they able to use that word? Boom. And then I started taking different words and understanding. Then I started reading the psychology books. Then I started reading uh, books on um, lying. Uh, body language, deception, and different things like that, and how to read the people and engage with people, and then that's when I be learn. I begin to learn how to talk better, and how to express myself, and then reading these psychology books, and and the criminal mind. That shit was talking about me. I was like, yo, I be doing that same shit. I be thinking like that. Boom, and I when I said, oh shit, yeah, that's me. I'm a dumb. I'm dumb as shit. I used to myself. With self-talk and self-hate. I can't stand you talking to me. So I had to better myself, man. And then when I finally went to that parole board, and every time they asked me the same question to see if I understood why I did what I did. And that's the same thing with these kids today. You ask them. They don't know why they even doing what they're doing. You know what I'm saying? Why are you selling drugs? I'm trying to get money. Oh, so you think that's what it is. You just think it's about money. You know what I'm saying? It's deeper than that. And they asked me the question. Why you shot him? But before I answered that, they said, why you had a gun for? 
And every time I went to parole, I said I had it for protection. They said, yeah. So you grew up in a household with your mother. Yeah. So your mother had a gun for protection too. No. So why you had one for protection? She ain't need one. And that's when I used to be like, what you mean? Why she ain't need one? Because I got it. No, 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 no. When you leave the household, shouldn't your mother have a gun too? Because you need protection because your neighborhood and your neighborhood was like this and all that. And it was fucking shooting going on. It's Cowboys and in the neighborhood, right? Nah, I wasn't like that. So, okay, so why you need had a gun? Wow. I had a gun because um for protection because um now I'm stuck. But when I finally got it together and understood me and why I was doing the things I was doing, they asked me that question every time. Why you had the gun? I said I had a gun because I wanted to kill somebody. They was like, oh, yeah? yeah? I wanted to kill somebody. I had a gun because a gun gave me power. Without a gun, I was a coward. I didn't have no problem with fighting with these, but a gun made it easy. I could shoot you from across the street. And when I shot somebody... Which this wasn't my first crime. For somebody, it gave me pleasure. I felt good. It gave me power. People fearing me. They was like, "Oh shit! Wow, this motherfucker's you ready." You admit he understand what the yeah. fuck he did. So right. now I'm breaking down. I had poor impulse control. When people came to me and said we got a problem, I'm ready to go get the gun. Let's get him. I didn't have impulse control. I was desensitized and I dehumanized people. I looked at people. As ops, I looked at them as enemies and niggas. I didn't look at them as people because I was desensitized. And that pain came from deep within inside me from when I lost my father. And I didn't care about nobody. Me growing up, I hated my father because he was never there. And I used to always say, this nigga. So I already planted in my mind, I can kill a nigga. Even my own father because I hated that he wasn't there for me. You know what I'm saying? So that hatred ran deep. And I never fully understood it. So me speaking to them, they talking boom. And uh, then they start asking, you know, they ask you, what have you done since you've been here? And I tell them, you know, I could do college. I could do all kind of shit. What I want to talk about today is time. How much time is enough time for taking a person's life? No time is enough time. So whatever decision that you make today, we're giving me time. I will be satisfied with that because he's no longer here. His family's going to suffer for the rest of their life. I'm still here with my family. I have my kids, and I have still have breath to breathe. They let my ass go. I went back. And I'm out of here. Dude was like, man, you can't, you know, because in prison, you can't think positive. You got to think negative, or they might. So they're like, yo, you know, you can't be thinking, like, yo, they're going to let you go. Then you get the paper. You be stressed. I was like, I'm out of here. I don't give a fuck what y'all telling me. You know what I'm saying? And I wound up coming out. You know what I'm saying? So. Me being locked up, it was a, it was a, a bad thing, but it was a great experience because it saved me. And I say it saved me because if I continue getting away with the things that I was doing, I eventually was going to get killed. And after that right there, that incident, that shit made me feel like extra like I'm about to go machine gun Kelly all of this shit because I don't care. And I didn't care, but I had problems with police. I don't have situations where the police came on a scene with me. And I'm arguing with my girl. Man, I'm just arguing. And they come. Yo, take it down. And they got the stick out. And I just smacked this. Get the fucking stick out of here. One of your niggas pull a gun on. Shoot me. They like, what the fuck is wrong with him? I was bugging. Like, yo. That's crazy. It was drugs. It wasn't no medication. It was just, I was, I, I hate it. I just hate. I had that you hate in me. There. Yeah, you were yeah. there at that point. I like, I've actually there. spoke with. Hot Boy Turk, you know what I mean? I've done interviews with guys like Hot Boy Turk who explained his situation like that to me as well, 10 Toes. You know, like, that was an amazing breakdown right there. And, you know, because we hear it a lot that you, they don't let you out at these parole meetings until you fully understand what you've done wrong. You know what I mean? That's one of the last things, I guess, you got to, before they let you back out into the real world and shit. Mm -hmm. So, like, I had homeboys right after I made it. I told them, I said, yo, when you go in there, you can't be bullshitting. Because I, I know dudes that have been in there longer than me, and they was going in there with the same thing about why they had weapons and all that. I said, no, you got to go in there and tell them the truth. And like, But I am telling the truth. And I Finally. said, like, yeah, I said, let me get the truth. Tell me this. Why did you have your gun? He said, I had it for protection because I had beef with these dudes. That's not why you had it. You had it because you was going to kill one of them dudes. That's why you had it. You had it you, because my whole thing was... 
I said guns, uh, 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 guns don't kill people. People kill people. In order for the gun to work, a person got to be behind it, pulling it. The gun ain't going to get up and do it on his own. So people kill people, and no matter how much you try to fight it, they never going to let you go. And their whole thing was, I'm not going in there saying I had it because I was going to kill somebody. I said, well, you ain't never get out there. And guarantee you, my mans that was locked up for year after years after years, and they called me, yo, yo, they hit me again. I said, what you went there and said? Nah, I told him, I said, see, you ain't listening, motherfucker. Right. 100%. You don't want to, you want them to see the good person in you and the change that you made. You can tell them about that change, but first tell them the ugly side. They want to hear the ugliness in you. Yeah. And then you want to hear your transition. How you yeah. transition to become the good person you are today. You going in there telling them all this good. Yeah, I went to college, I did this, and I got a family, but they want to hear that shit. You somebody. They ain't got their family member. What you gonna say to the victim? What can you say to the person in the grave or to their mother right now? What you gonna say? Oh no, I had it for protection. Your son was coming at me. They don't want to hear that shit. You know what I'm saying? So when it comes so, to prison, when it comes to parole, the parole, right? Also at the same time, parole is a is a tricky thing because they want to hear that side, but also it's a number game too when it comes to parole. Sometimes they want you to do a certain number. Sometimes they feel that the court system lets you go. You got over. You got some dudes that got five to fifteen years for murder. And the court and the parole to hit him and hit him and make him do 10 years, make him do 12 years, you know what I'm saying? Make him do right. more time. When me, the judge was on me, the judge put in my papers, he's a manipulator and he shouldn't be released. That's what they put in my paperwork because I manipulated the system and I'm manip- and then when they were saying that, I'm like, I know I'm manipulating y'all bugging out. That's not me because I'm I'm only seeing the good in myself. But what it was is that after I committed my crime, I went to the precinct and I told the police I was there. I seen the dude that did it. And I was out looking for the guy with the police. And I'm the that I did it. And then the next time they call me down there, so we want you to look through the books and boom, and I'm going through the books. Like, nah, nah, I don't see him in here. I don't, I don't see the guy. And then they got caught, they got caught on to it. They said, this, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. This fucking right here is something about him. You know what I'm saying? And then they wound up getting me and locking me up. But I was a manipulator. I was about what everything that the judge and everybody was saying, but I just didn't want to face the fact that that's what I was. You know what I'm saying? That's some real shit right there, man. So yeah. what year did you eventually get out of jail, Toes? 2012. 2012, man. Beautiful, man. And I wanted to yeah. ask, which uh, which New York correctional facilities were you housed at? Oh, all of them shits. All the masses from Sing Sing, Auburn, Elmira, to Wendy's, to Sullivan, to um, Otisville, to Woodburn. Shit. Now I go to Mid Orange, Kasaki, Rikers Island, uh, uh, Brooklyn House, the Tombs. All of them shits. I just ain't never been to uh, Attica. I was in Clinton. Yeah. I was, in, I was in the worst of the worst. We got 300 people in here. I want you guys to share this video. Also, subscribe to 10 Toes Down TV. He releases videos pretty much on a daily basis. Um, Mm -hmm. Right now, we're actually getting in-depth with 10 Toes Down right now. Um, I wanted to ask, did you have any run-ins in jail with any of other rappers who were locked up? Did you, uh, throughout the years, did you meet anybody? Like, I know China Mac was locked up for a stint. Uh, Shine, Tragedy Gaddafi. Yeah, nah, Sean, my man. I got, I don't know if I, I had pictures up before with me and Sean. Sean was my man. Sean was cool. Yeah, me and Sean was together. Sean was crazy. Sh- something wrong with Sean. See, no bullshit. I'm not saying like something wrong. You know, I say, yo, something wrong with this dude. Ain't nothing wrong. Something wrong with him. Really crazy. Well, Sean I mean, he had, was with J Lo and Diddy. You know what I mean? He was with J Lo yeah. and Diddy at the prime of his career. He had, he had this shit, right? Sean used to make a whole meal, a pasta, a pie. All kind of shit. He make a whole bunch of food. Talk, talk to me. Talk to me, man. Talk back to me. I'm talking to you. Talk back to me. He make a whole meal, right? And then go in the bathroom and throw it up. He got shit on his shirt. I'm like, what the fuck is you doing? That motherfucker will eat a whole meal and then go throw it up. They had a they got a name for that shit. Yeah, People my grandfather eat. would be doing that shit. They do that and it keeps their appetite up too, but it also keeps yeah. their weight down. Yeah, and I'm like, yo, what the fuck sick shit is this dude doing, man? And then we did a show. Me and him did a show in jail before. 
because I used to I used to talk like Sean and rhyme like he ain't like it, but I <laughs> I used to rhyme like him, right? So they put the beat, you know that uh Don Believe Whoa, and yeah, that boy. So I come out, don't tell me who wanna fuck with us. I just the ass is dust the dust. Yo, I used to come through and I'll be talking to him. And when I used to sit with him sometime, I'll be like, oh, yo, what up, son? What's up, King? You good, wow. son? And it's a of niggas. He'd be like, hey, yo, why you doing that, man? Stop doing that. Was, but he was cool, though. Everybody loved Sean. He was official. He was the Jew. He wasn't Sean in jail, though. He was Levi. His name was Moses. Moses Levi. Right. That was his name in the joint. Uh, Sean was cool. Uh, Slick Rick. Slick Rick was cool. Who else? Uh, nah, Tupac ain't never. Tupac was in the medium. He was in Clinton, but he ain't come over to uh, where I was at. Who else? That's it. Uh, Sean. Um, yeah. that was Slick crazy, Rick. man. You know, G Unit was court in Shine when he was in jail. Shaw Money was calling him for the label deal. He eventually signed with Def Jam for three and a half million. Did anything change for Shine when he signed for three and a half million? Nah, nah, nah. He still was the same. Nobody never fucked with Shine. Nobody. He was good. He worked in a Jewish office. He the one that gave out. He sold a Jewish uh, breads and shit. Um, he stayed to himself a lot. He had a couple of dudes he would talk to. Um, he would go to the yard. This was crazy shit. Because I'm in the yard. I'm hitting still. Everybody in the weight pit. Sean to come in there. Yo, get the 20s. He'd do 10 reps. Put the shit down. That's it for the day and walk out. Yo, Sean, stop coming in here, man, with that stupid shit. And he really thought he was doing something. But yeah, Sean was a good dude. He was cool, man. I seen I seen him on the I seen a lot of people when they came to see him. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people came, those, those that showed him support. Um, before we uh move on from that, I wanted to ask uh any Max B. I know at one point he was locked up before he oh, came yeah, home. Max, Max, Max B too, Max B, yeah, yeah, yeah. But he wasn't Max B. It was Charlie, Charlie Rambo. Charlie Lincoln. That's who he was. He wasn't no Max B. Yeah. Max, yeah, Charlie was on locked up too. Any memorable experience with Charlie, aka Max B? Nah, nah, nothing. Because see, because everybody looking at the rap and all that other stuff. Oh, no. dudes, regular dudes, you know what I'm saying? Regular dudes. Word. I ain't never run up with uh Mayno. Uh, his co-defendant is my man, but never with uh Mayno though. Me and him never bump heads or nothing. Word. Maybe some other people. I'm, I just can't. Even remember well um uh hassan campbell said that he had been housed in uh c74 and c76 is that also known as the four upper or am i mistaken no you got you got different houses right i mean you got different prisons on rikers island you got c74 c95 hdm only different now within them housing units you can have a house that's called four upper Four upper can be a block or a dorm area. It could be four upper, four lower, a three upper, three lower, two upper, two lower. And that's how the house is a, a name, you know what I'm saying, throughout the house. So on Rikers Island, you got one upper, one lower, two upper, three lower, you know what I'm saying, like that. That's how the houses go. So he said he was in C-74, four upper or some shit. I don't know. When I was on Rikers Island, that wasn't the house that was like the most dangerous house to be in, the tough house now. When I was on Rikers Island, it was Mod Nine. Mod Nine was one of the craziest houses. It was a, it's a mod. So when you say mod, it's a dorm. The uh, the uppers and all that they sells. I can't remember. I think that's how it go. The mods is dorms. The uppers is sales and lowers is sales. Whatever. But Hassan said he was on Rikers Island at a time when you didn't have to hold your own. He was there at a time when it was uh, gang banging and dudes jumping dudes and. It wasn't what you know, it was who you knew. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't about when I came in, the phones were straight out. You pick up the telephone, you could call your family straight out on the phone. When they came in, about that time, they switched the phone system, it was clicks. So now dudes is, is taking dudes' phone time on clicks. But when it was straight out, not everybody was able to get on that telephone. Because if, if you come in a house and the whole phone time slots is taken, from the morning to the night, everybody got their certain time like they get on. You got over 60 people on the dorm. And everybody, when he finished, he passed him the phone. He passed him the phone. Everybody's passing the phone. You standing there, when's well, my turn? You're going to have to take your turn. So you go in the house. That's if you're about getting on the phone and talking to your family. So you would have to go in the house, see who's you know, running the phone. Yo, let me holler at you. 
yo, you run these phones? Yeah, I run them. Uh, who got nine to ten? Nine to ten o'clock. Uh, he do, or he say I do. Or oh, what's up? What you asking about the phone? Because I want some time. I right, said, so what time you want? I want this time. All right, he got that. Just walk over there and do whatever you got to do. You know what I'm saying? You just walk over. Yo, I want your time. Oh, yo, tell him come to the bathroom. I want to go gun to gun with him for his time. And then that's how it was. Or you could go in the house, go to the phone, somebody on it. Yo, excuse me, real quick, bro. Let me just see the phone real quick. Take the phone, take it loose, and go in the back. I got the phone now. Come get it. What's up? Pull your knives out. Let's get it. You got dudes that did it like that. Or you had some dudes that had to take the phone. You could screw the mouthpiece off and take the phone piece out when you talk to them. You take it out, put it in your pocket. All right, now what's up? What y'all going to do about it? Either they're going to finish you or you're going to, you know what I'm saying? They're going, yo, bro, let me talk to you for a minute, man. Yo, yeah. Is, yeah. But listen, man, no cap and no bullshit. Deshaun Campbell could not, he's not ready for war. He's not ready for that type of world. He already was, he went into a building with WAC 100 and didn't even know that WAC, didn't like him. Whack already studied him. Whack seen his videos. Whack.